Then, this is Deepak Kumar, Assistant Professor in Kite Group of Institution. In this lecture, we will discuss the concept of microprocessor architecture and the operation of its component. So, these are the content for today's lecture. The first one is, uh, first of all, we will discuss the introduction of microprocessor. Then uh, we will discuss uh, the components of microprocessor and then uh, we will discuss uh, the operations of its component. So we will start with uh, the introduction part. So before starting this microprocessor, first of all, it should be very clear that why actually microprocessor is required and what are the place where microprocessor is actually required. If we are talking about tube lights or any light system, so does any processing is required? No, you simply switch on uh, the button and the light is goes on. So when uh, we are talking about air condition, so in air condition we actually require the remote system. So we uh, in the remote in the remote we generally press a particular key, and on the basis of that a particular functioning is performed. So in that particular case, actually we require processing. So whenever there is a requirement of program through which the processing can be performed, in that particular case we generally use processor. So as the name suggests microprocessor, so when we are talking about remote control of any devices like let's suppose if we are talking about television or if we are talking about uh, air conditions then here we doesn't require any uh, huge processor. We require a very small processor. So the processor that we use in this particular field is only known as microprocessor. So we will come into deeper analysis about microprocessor but before that we will discuss the concept of computer. If we are talking about computer, so in computer the CPU is basically the brain of the computer where the processing is performed with the help of CPU and uh, the computer basically contains these units input unit then we have CPU we have output unit and we have memory unit where the processing is basically taken place via CPU and CPU basically contains these, uh, these components that is arithmetic and logic unit we have some registers and we have some timing and control units to implement the control information. So in computer we actually use CPU but when we are talking about microprocessor then th uh, this CPU is basically replaced by microprocessor. Okay, so microprocessor basically replaces this CPU and the computer in that particular case where the microprocessor is used that computer is actually known as microcomputer that is known as microcomputer okay so uh, that is actually the meaning of microprocessor in microprocessor the arithmetic and logic unit the registers and the timing and control units both are all these things are available in a single integrated chip so that's why this CPU is replaced by microprocessor. So in the same way if we are talking about microprocessor based system, so in the place of CPU we have microprocessor and microprocessor means what? Where these arithmetic logic unit, control unit and these registers array are basically available in a single IC chip that is very small in size. So that's why it is known as microprocessor. Micro means is small. That, that, that is actually known as microprocessor. So when we are talking about microprocessor based system, so in this particular system, we also have input devices, we also have output devices, we have memory unit, and we have microprocessor in place of CPU. Where the content of microprocessor are same. That means microprocessor basically contain arithmetic and logic unit, control unit, and the register array. So, <clears throat> if we are talking about the components of microprocessor, so uh, basically these are the components. 
So now we come into the definition that what is actually the microprocessor. So microprocessor is multi-purpose, programmable, clock driven and register based electronic device that reads binary information. Every processor basically reads the binary information. So that reads binary information from a storage device just like a memory and accept binary data and provide result as an output. If we are talking about uh, if we are talking about our CPU, so in the, in in the particular CPU we have motherboard, and in the motherboard we have a single microprocessor chip, where arithmetic logic unit and control units are uh, available. So our desktop, laptop, these are best example of microprocessor based system, and these are basically the chip IC chip where arithmetic logic unit, control unit and registers arrays are available. So uh, uh, actually when we are talking about microprocessor, so the very first commercially used microprocessor was Intel 8085. Intel 8085. And this is actually the basic thing. After, after three years, uh, 8086 was developed. That is actually uh, well commercially used. Okay, so that's why uh, these are the basics of microprocessor. And in current, uh, and then in 2000 era, the, there is uh, P1, P2, P3. That is Pentium 1, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, Pentium 4. Okay, then Core 2 Duo. And right now we are just in I series. Uh, I7 is currently in executing condition. So we are now in these conditions. But these are what? These are the basic 8085, 8086. So it doesn't, but it doesn't mean that we are just uh, working with outdated uh, version of uh, version of microprocessor. Actually, I just told you that whenever we are using a remote control, so in that in remote control we doesn't require this i7 processor, i3 processor, and so on. We actually require only single chip. So these are the basics. But uh, it doesn't mean that it is outdated. So uh, in this particular microprocessor, we are just working with these type of microprocessor that is 8085 and 8086. If uh, we are talking about the component of microprocessor, so uh, I just told you that just like a computer, in computer we have input uh, unit, output unit, and microprocessor uh, and CPU basically contains arithmetic and logic unit, control unit, and register array. In the same way, if we are talking about microcomputer, so microcomputer basically contains microprocessor in place of CPU, and uh, the remaining devices are same. That means we have input devices, we have output devices, and we have memory unit also. Okay, so now these are basically the components of microprocessor. So actually, uh, we have input and output unit, we have memory unit and we have microprocessor which basically contains uh, uh, subunit that is arithmetic and logic unit, registers and control unit. Now we will study uh, one by one uh, each component in detail. Okay, if we are talking about input and output units, so uh, these input and output units are basically used for for data, for transferring the data for, from input devices to, uh, to microprocessor or from microprocessor to output devices, we generally use this input and output unit. It does not perform any processing part. Actually, this is only for you for input and output the data. In the same way, we have memory unit. So memory, actually, uh, if you are talking about memory, so. Uh, in uh, actually we are uh, just dealing with the basics of microprocessor that is 8085 8086 okay so uh, uh, right now if we are talking about memory so the memory means we are talking about primary memory we are just dealing with primary memory and we know that the primary memory is divided into two part the first one is your ram and the second one is your rom that is very well known first one is ram and the next one is your rom RAM is known as random access memory and ROM is known as read only memory. As we know that RAM is basically your volatile memory. That means when the power is off, then the data is uh, then the data is disappeared. 
and ROM is what that is your read only memory sometimes we require some permanent data so for that purpose we generally use this ROM and this the, the combination of these RAM and ROM is known as the primary memory actually we are just using uh, RAM in in uh, in big uh, purpose. Actually, we are just uh, using ROM for very small purpose. So, if you're talking about RAM, so RAM is again divided into two part. The first one is your static RAM, and the next one is your dynamic RAM. The first one is your static, and the next one is your dynamic RAM. Out of these two, the static and dynamic RAM, uh, the static RAM is much faster than dynamic RAM still most of the computer basically uses its most part as a dynamic RAM where very less amount of static RAM is generally used uh, there, there is a reason uh, for that actually when we are talking about static RAM so static RAM is, uh, is more costly than the dynamic RAM so that, that's why we, the most of the part of the memory will be considered as a dynamic RAM in static RAM, uh, we generally use the flip-flop for uh, storing the data and uh, in dynamic RAM, we generally use the capacitors for uh, storing the data. Actually, capacitors have uh, its own uh, charging and discharging uh, nature. So, uh, the external refreshment circuit is required for charging this particular capacitor. And in static RAM, the data is stored in flip-flop. If you're talking about microprocessor, so in microprocessor we have arithmetic and logic unit to perform arithmetic and logic operations. We have registers array, so actually when we are dealing with instructions and um, um, for, execute, for execution of that instruction, uh, if uh, we want to, if we want required uh, a temporary storage, so this register array basically used as a temporary storage device to store the intermediate result and we have control unit control unit basically provides the control signals uh, 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 to, uh, to perform the operations of microprocessor that means uh, uh, the microprocessor basically wants to perform read operations or write operations okay so the, on the basis of this control signals the read and write operation is performed okay and uh, this control unit also uh, tells us that tells the microprocessor that uh, the data is uh, processed uh, by the input devices or the output devices that means the read operation is performed via input devices or output devices so for this purpose we also use this control unit okay so these are basically the purposes of these components of microprocessor that we actually used okay so uh, if we are talking about uh, the pro the working of microprocessor so what the microprocessor basically does first of all uh, what the user does user basically uses the input devices let's, let's suppose user uses the keyboard and write the program in memory so let's suppose here the user write the program in memory whenever we are talking about memory so memory basically contains two things the first one is the program and the next one is the data just see uh, it with the help of an example let's suppose if we are using our mobile phone so and we are using the whatsapp app so whatsapp app is what whatsapp app is your program and if you are talking about uh, messages so messages is basically your data okay in the in the same way let's suppose if we are using microsoft word so Microsoft Word is what? Microsoft Word is your app, that is your program. And while when we are writing something or when we are typing something, then that is what? That is your data. Okay, so every memory basically contains these two informations, either program as well as data. So first of all, user write a program in memory unit. Then microprocessor first of all fetch the instructions okay instructions actually program is what program is the collection of instruction so microprocessor first of all fetch the instruction so fetching the instruction when the instruction is fetched then microprocessor basically decode that instruction decoding means what that means uh, to identify that what actually instruction do what is the meaning of that instruction or we can say that what is the op code of that particular instruction 
which type of operation is performed by that particular instruction okay so that is actually known as the decoding of instruction then the instruction is decoded and after that the instruction will be executed okay so that is actually the uh, the instruction cycles through which the instructions are executed or we can say that uh, the, the instructions are processed with the help of microprocessor <clears throat> so as i uh, earlier told you that uh, in instruction cycle we have three step the first one is fetch the instruction microprocessor first of all fetch the instruction from where from main memory then decode the instruction that means uh, find out the meaning of that particular instruction find out the op code of that instruction and then finally the, it execute that particular instruction so i just show you an example let's suppose if we have written a is equal to b plus c so this type of instruction is known as high level language and at b comma c this instruction this type of instruction is known as the assembly language actually a uh, user basically uses either high level language or assembly language and this is basically uh, known as low level language or it is also known as machine language or it is also known as object code or binary code okay so that is your machine language so user actually write a program either uh, with the help of uh, high level language or with the help of assembly language then then the user generally use the concept of compiler and compiler basically convert this high level language into machine language or if the program is written in assembly language then we generally use the concept of assembler which convert this assembly language into machine language because processor only understand the binary informations it processor cannot understand this high level language, language or assembly language so that's why we require compiler or assembler to convert your high level language into machine language or assembly language into machine language so that the microprocessor can understand that particular information okay and that is what that is generally known as the op code and this is the op code for add instructions so every instructions have different op code how the microprocessor know that here we have to perform add operations with the help of this op code okay and in decode in decoding phase we generally identify the meaning of this op code that is which operation is actually performed via this op code okay so that is basically your instruction cycles and that are basically the type of instructions okay now we are just talking about buses actually i just told you that uh, the microprocessor first of all fetch the instruction but how this particular instructions information is received by the microprocessor actually uh, for this purpose we generally use the buses buses is buses are what buses are basically the collection of wires through which the informations or we can say that the, the, the data is transferred from one device to another device okay let's suppose if we want to uh, read the instruction from memory that means the data is read from memory by the microprocessor so the data is transferred from memory to microprocessor so for this transfer of data we actually required the buses so buses are what buses are basically the collection of wires and uh, where one bit information is transferred in each wire okay let's suppose if we want to transfer the four bit information so four wires are required in a particular bus if we want to transfer the eight bits information then eight wires are required in this particular bus because in each wire one bit information is transferred okay so buses are basically communication line between any two devices so actually when we are talking about microprocessor so in microprocessor we actually use the system bus system bus is basically what system bus is nothing but it is basically the collection of three types of buses address bus then we have data bus and then we have control bus so system bus is basically the combination of these three buses address bus basically contains the address information data bus basically contain the data information and control bus basically contains the control signal 
that means which operations we actually want to perform we want to perform read operation or write operation or as well as it is also informed that if we want to perform read operations so from where from memory or from input output device so memory or input output devices in the same way we want to perform write operation so where from memory or input output devices okay so memory read and memory write input output read and input output write so all these control information is basically traversed with in with the help of control bus okay so let's suppose i just show you an example let's suppose if we have a memory i just told you that the very first task is what first of all microprocessor fetch the instruction from the memory so actually in memory we have an address let's suppose here we have 2000 address and here we have data so first of all the address bus basically contains the address information so then microprocessor can access this particular location and after that let's suppose here the data is 25 then this data is uh, data is read by the microprocessor or write by the microprocessor uh, with the help of data bus so the, the data information is basically traversed via the data bus so in data bus we have data information and with the help of control bus we just identify that microprocessor wants to perform read operation or write operations okay so uh, this information is carried with the help of control bus so this is basically the system bus model for uh, the microprocessor so this is all about for today's lecture uh, thank you so much